two B&M collector sets are back once again as today I'm going to take a look at one of the three sets available being the Monsters Collector figure set, the most generically named figure set on the planet ever. This of course contains two Cybermen figures and a random new series on Taran. God knows why, we'll get onto him in a little bit. I'm sure he's going to be extremely exciting. So as I was saying, this is one of three sets available. It is in fact rather unusual because normally there's only one set per year that I'm actually interested in, but this year there's two because we have some rather interesting variants. The other one being the Fourth Doctor one with a variant of K9 and the Fourth Doctor, and then the other one being a Ninth Doctor with a Rose, and it's absolutely horrible, and I shall not be buying that anytime soon as it's a waste of $16.99. I already have the original figures. And it just looks god awful. Every single one that I've seen so far has literally looked like the crappiest figures that have ever been released. I'm not even exaggerating there. But this set is one of which I was looking forward to, especially for this one in the middle. So, firstly, taking a look at the box, there's nothing too much that exciting going on. We have 5.5 slash 14 centimeter scale collector series at the top, the Doctor Who logo, the Monsters Collector figure set. The figures are displayed rather nicely in the middle there. And then we have includes Cyberman, Cyber Controller, and Sontaran Score, who's not in fact score whatsoever. We'll get on to that in a little bit we have five plus at the top the character options logo at the top we get the same thing repeated once again side of the box we get doctor who image of the figures once again and exactly the same at the opposite side to be honest just a few more pictures there and of course at the back of the box there's nothing exactly too much going on doctor who logo the monster collector set and the three giant images of the figures available will be nice to see the images being a little bit smaller along with the name tags and maybe having a little write-up on each character or something like that because it looks just a tad knockoff and i don't know why but it just seems very very empty but it is nice to see that they've included some of the episode titles at the bottom along with when they aired unlike the other box sets which is rather unusual company tat at the bottom as per usual and that's really it for the box although i must say it does look very nice in there but due to this being a review i need to take them out and so firstly i'm going to start off with the cyber controller from the tomb of the cybermen of course a second doctor story because i'm presuming that if you've bought this set this is most likely one of the figures that you have bought it for as it was originally a very rare figure it was originally a collecting build with the age of steel wave which was basically three 1960s figures and the next Doctor Cyber Leader and you could collect them all together, stick all the limbs together and then eventually it will create this the figure that to be honest generated a lot of money on eBay but it isn't really much going on. It's basically your standard 1960s Cyberman sculpt to an extent but with all the interesting stuff such as the chest unit and all of the pipes mainly removed and instead we have a rather unusual looking head which let's not even go into what that looks like and please don't even think about that too hard but yeah it is to be honest a little little bit of not exactly a dull figure but an unusual one. We have the two cyber controllers side by side and I've only just noticed how weird and gormless this cyber design looks. It really does, very emotionless and a little bit weird looking, especially with the orange orb coming out of the head. But I'm only going to really do from the waist up because there isn't really much going on at the bottom of the figure because generally the helmet is the thing that is changed. It is exactly the same sculpt. However, what they've done this time is apparently made it more accurate to what is seen in the actual story because this episode is black and white. We don't really know the exact colours of what the Cyberman did look like. However, judging by a lot of the images, it did seem to be a lot more darker from the original release from what we've got. But to be quite honest, I think I still prefer the original release a little bit more. I just think that the other one, uh, the latest one, is a little bit too dark. But as you can see, it generally has exactly the same details. Of course, starting off with the very minimal face expression, we do have the eyes and the mouth, which has been done rather nicely. I love the way that this is in fact submerged into the face and we have a little bit of a gap with some silver paint apps on the inside, along with the black lines running along the sides of the eyes and mouth as well. Of course on the sides of the face we do also have this rather weird engraved symbol which is like a circle and then we also have a little bit of a trim line running all the way up the side of the face as well which I do believe is something that was in the story. And then on the back once again nothing really too much going on we just have this little sort of weird pyramid section which once again of course is darker due to the front being darker as well which is the brain apparently even though human brain has never looked like that and if you do think a human brain does look like that maybe try and reset biology but yeah this is something that does once again have a little bit of a revised paint app. The latest version is a little bit of a darker orange as opposed to the original and the veins on the latest version are also a little bit more prominent. They're sort of a little bit more greyish just to an extent but it's silver band running across the top which I do believe is something that could have been added to the original but they may have just forgot. I don't particularly know. Moving off the head now to the rest of the body there isn't really that much going on. It is basically your standard boiler suit really with all the different things removed. It's just been painted in your average silver. It's very shiny and nice as you can see we have this trim line running down the 
back there, as well as on the front along with a few different creases and things. And then we also have a series of tubing around the side as well, which has been really nicely replicated as you can see. I love the way it in fact splits up so it doesn't really hinder the articulation very much, along with the ping pong balls at either sort of side there to split up the different bits of wire. And then of course the hands have also been done in your standard 60s style with the very alien three sort of fingery things that remind me a little bit of a Sontaran. Oh dear, we'll get onto him in a little bit. Thanks for reminding me, Brain. But yeah, then we've got the other side there once again, exactly the same. And then the rest of the figure, nothing really too much going on. Once again, the repetition of a few creases and things in there, much like how it was in the actual show. But unfortunately, just taking a closer look there, mine does tend to have a little bit of a weird mark on going down the side of the thigh, which could have been a little bit fixed up. And then we also have a bit of a scratch there as well. But this was the only one in the shop and I wasn't really prepared to wait any longer for this set. And then of course, at the very bottom there, we do get your average moon boots once again with the silver and then of course a darker bit going along the side there to represent the heels. It is nice to see as this was originally a collect and build figure. Of course, if you tried hard enough, you could probably rip this figure apart, especially at the head, the waist and probably the legs and arms as well, much like where it did in fact come apart originally. But what it is nice to see is this is a lot stronger from the original. As you can see, I don't need to put any pressure on whatsoever with this one and it does come apart at the waist, much like how it did when I originally got it. So very briefly going over the articulation now, it is your average figure really. The head does rotate from side to side. If you force it completely, it would do 360. Same for the arms. You have the upper arm articulation as well, which once again is hindered by the pipes and then up and down at the elbow, which isn't hindered by the pipes. 360 at the wrist, 360 at the waist, and then you have your average T-crotch joint at the bottom. So basically, for when this was originally released, it's your pretty average articulation really. And finally, doing a little bit of a comparison with the Tomb Controller next to the other Tomb Cybermen. As you can see, he fits in really well. I do quite like this figure, to be honest, and I'm glad that the people who originally missed out on this figure can get one in some form. It is nice to see that they have changed it, though, however, so the people who did put the effort in to get the original figure can still return the original version that is worth a little bit more money. And as well, to be honest, I kind of like the original one a little bit more. Maybe if it had the silver piping around the very top of the head, it would be sort of the definitive one for me. Although the new one does have a few differences that I do in fact like, especially the different details to the Bryn. So now moving on to the next figure of the set, and it is another Cyberman, this time from the sixth Doctor story, Attack of the Cybermen. Now this is a very welcome figure to the collection, it's one of which that I and a lot of classic figure collectors have expected for a very long time, because it's one of those ones that is a very easy reuse of a sculpt that we've had for quite a few years, of one of which that a lot of people will welcome to the collection, because I do believe that with the release of this figure, it now means that we've had all of your average trooper figures from the 1980s, of course minus the ones such as, say, the Cyber Controller from Attack of the Cybermen that would require a whole new sculpt. So firstly, comparing the Attack Cyberman to the original classic series Wave 2 Earthshock Cyberman, it is pretty much exactly the same sculpt, minus the lower half, which we'll be getting onto in a little bit. However, the paint apps generally overall do tend to be a lot brighter on the new Attack Cyberman, which I do believe is accurate to what is seen in the story, as opposed to the more battered, dark look of the Earthshock Cyberman. Starting off at the head, as you can see at the very top, on the Earthshock Cyberman, we do have a little bit of green circuitry. On the latest Attack Cyberman, this has been sculpted, however, not painted. On the latest Attack Cyberman, the eyes have been painted fully in black. However, on the Earthshock Cyberman, it seems to be only slightly painted black to replicate a little bit of shading. Moving to the lower half, we do have the mouthpiece, which once again has been replicated nicely. I do believe that this has remained exactly the same. However, towards the side of the face, you do have the piping. On the Earthshock Cyberman, this is a clear plastic. However, on the latest version, it is now fully painted silver. Down to the chest unit, once again, this is exactly the same sculpt. However, on the Earthshock Cyberman, there is a small, minuscule little dot that is painted yellow. On the Attack Cyberman, this is no longer prominent. Taking a look at the back of the helmet, it's nice to see that a lot of the same detailing has remained, including the screw holes of where the actor is in fact of course encased into the Cyberman head. Same detailing of the handlebars, the ridging, and the back panel of the chest unit once again remains the same. The gun weapon has also seen a little bit of an update on the original Earthshock Cyberman. It is, of course, painted in a bright silver, much like the actual figure. However, on the latest Attack Cyberman, the gun is now more of a coppery silver with a little bit of a highlight, much like how the Rogue Cyberman was that was released with Perry. Pairing the previous boiler suits from the two Attack Cyberman and the Earthshock version, as you can see, the Earthshock one tends to be a lot sharper. The piping and the mesh detail has been brought out a lot better by using some black highlights. However, on the two Attack Cyberman versions, they tend to follow a little bit of a similar a weathering pattern. Of course, on the Rogue Cyberman to the far left, it does have quite a lot of green splodges on, which to this day, I don't have a clue what those are meant to be. I think it's meant to be moss or something like that. I don't even know. However, there is also a few grey scratches on this, which has been replicated on the latest B&M Attack Cyberman variant. 
final and most prominent difference for this Cyberman is of course the use of the Attack of the Cyberman sculpted boots as opposed to Earthshock moon boots. These were first seen on the Rogue Cyberman and was the first main giveaway that eventually in the line we would see a standard Attack Cyberman trooper. And finally just for completest reasons giving a little bit of a comparison towards the Silver Nemesis Cyberman they are completely different figures. The boiler suit is different, the chest unit is different and even the head sculpt is a little bit different. So generally overall this figure looks really good along with the rest of the 80s Cybermen and fits in really nicely. Okay, a closer look at the figure now. I absolutely love the original Earthshock Cyberman, therefore I have absolutely no reason to not like this one because the detail is pretty much the same. I was worried that due to this being a part of a budget set that the detail would decrease, but it turns out that there isn't really any noticeable differences, unlike previous figures that have been released in this line that do have a few corners cut, such as, say, the recent Fourth Doctor figure that only has one side of its scarf painted on off of the head. They've really nicely captured the different sections of armour. I love the way that we have a lot of different ridges and a lot of different areas to really create some depth, as well as the mouthpiece that the bottom, much like on the original Cyberman. I love the way that this is in fact a clear piece of plastic, along with a silver piece underneath to make it look like an actual real mouth. Chest unit once again with a lot of depth, I love the way that we have the clear section to replicate some of the buttons underneath, as well as the details of the many different tubes on the other part of the chest unit. To accompany this, we have lots of different bits of detail on the boiler suit itself, including pieces of mesh, little bits of wiring, although I kind of wish that this stood out a little bit more. I think that the Earthshot Cyberman definitely stands out for detail a lot better than this figure. Instead, we just have this little rather odd brush pattern with a few bits of grey added on almost like flex. I think this sort of makes it look a little bit scruffy in parts and almost like it's been scratched. So it would be nice if this was sort of made to stand out a little bit better. The rest of the legs have also been detailed in the same manner having a bit of mesh and wire here and there. Both of the gloves of the figure have also been detailed rather nicely and do hold the gun pretty well. Although it still has the same problem as the other side men that it does take a few goes to actually get the gun in place to make it look normal. Of course at the very bottom of the figure we do get the attack of the side men boots. Now these have been detailed really well a lot more detail compared to that of the moon boots because they have a little bit more going on do get the laced up section at the front along with a few different sections of shoe as well as the heel and the ridging along the bottom and then of course at the very sole of the shoe there we do get a little bit of legal information so with this figure you also get the gun of course which once again is exactly the same design to any other sideman from the 80s really as opposed to the silver nemesis ones so we get the strap of a few details of bucklings on and things like that that haven't been painted it's just a little bit simple and then we have the gun itself to be quite honest it's been rather well painted not really too much paint bleed on this at the very top we get the red section along with the different black lines on that and then we also get the black handle as well along with the coppery goldy colour so yeah generally overall a really nice gun to go along with the Cyberman to hold. With a little bit of persuasion you can in fact get this Cyberman to hold the gun with both of its hands you can get one to sort of hold the top handle and then the other one to sort of wrap its hand around the actual barrel of the gun itself and once this is done it makes it look a little bit like how it did in the actual story and generally sets off the figure really nicely. And finally, going over articulation, it's nothing really too special, to be honest. It's just your average 80s Cyberman. The head does not move whatsoever. The arms can move 360, but it is hindered by the chest unit, and we do have the upper arm articulation for 360 as well. Bend at the elbow, 360 at the wrist, 360 at the waist. You've got the T-cotch joint. Bend at the knee, and then we also have 360 at the boot as well. So generally, a really possible figure. And now moving on to the third and final figure of the set. It's a Sontaran. Why on earth are you here? I don't have a clue. The box claims that this Sontaran Sontaran is Sontaran Score. That's in fact wrong because Sontaran Score was played by Dan Starkey and this is clearly not the one played by Dan Starkey. This is the one clearly played by the guy from the Young Ones looking incredibly angry about life. So yeah, we've seen a lot of this guy so far. He was re-released for Series 5. He's re-released several times in Series 4 and now he's re-released again this B&M set. To be quite honest, I would have rather them just shoved in, I don't know, another 10th Planet Cyberman because I wouldn't have minded one of them. Firstly, just to clear it up, the one on the left is in fact the one that we were probably meant to get in this set or at least it's the one on the box that they claim is in this set but it's not it's in fact the one on the right that we get in this set generally it's a completely different character one is quite obviously sort of Dan Starkey with the book teeth and one of them is obviously not Dan Starkey so I don't know if eventually when this set was originally planned we were going to get the other figure and they sort of forgotten and produced the other one by accident I don't particularly know instead we just got the same one that we've seen quite a few times and when I say that we've seen it quite a few times I mean about three or so so far. Here's a few examples. The one on the far left is in fact I do believe the original which rather oddly doesn't have as many details on the face as you can see. The original is a little bit sort of not exactly very creased. He's maybe a little bit less stressed or something like that. I don't particularly know. The original is a rather odd one lacks in detail and then we have the one in the very middle which is the one that I'm reviewing today which has a lot more creases on the 
face. However, it sort of keeps the same skin tone as the original. And then the one at the far side, I don't have a clue what's going on with this one. He seems to have a lot of different creases on the face. However, a little bit of a darker skin tone. So if anything, the new one is sort of a little bit of a middle ground between the two or something like that. But aside, to be quite honest, this is probably the best new series Sontaran in my collection. I think the detail on it is definitely a vast improvement from the original, especially taking a look at the face. It is quite obviously general style as seen in the Sontaran stratagem with all those different details increasing on the face. It's a little bit of a shame about the eyes. From what I can see, they are a little bit off. As you can see, he is slightly bong-eyed and it makes him look a little more crazy, which to be honest with that expression, he does look a little bit insane. So the armor has also seen a little bit of an upgrade. It is generally exactly the same sculpt. However, from what I can see, it's got a little bit more of a metallic feel. We have lots of different dark blue as well as lots of different panel sections, almost some abs in a way to an extent. And then we have even the little communicatory thingy there at the bottom, which for some reason always falls off my previous releases and I need to glue it back on and it's incredibly annoying. It's also nice to see that the shoulder pads are generally not as rubbery as the previous versions. I'll be comparing that in a little bit. And it's also nice to see that the actual neck brace is also a solid piece of plastic as opposed to the horrible rubbery stuff that we got on the previous release. And then the same on the back as well, the probic vent once again prominent, as well as the spine piece with lots of different ridges. Once again, the panels are sort of separated above each other, creating a little bit of depth. And that is the same for the legs as well. We get different bits raised above, as well as the knee pads and things actually sticking out. So touching on what I was saying about earlier, we're going to bring back Dan Starkey because for some reason he's the worst in the collection for this certain issue. For some reason, the shoulder pads as well as the neck brace section are incredibly crap and incredibly flimsy and horrible and it feels really cheap. When you go to put on the helmet, it just pops off again. It's nice to see that this has improved in releases. As you can see, this is in fact now solid plastic pretty much and it does once again when you actually put on the helmet, which I'll be coming on to in a little bit, in fact stays on. So generally, once again, this is probably my best on Taran so far because I have updated on those issues. So that is very good. Touching on another issue that the previous Sontarans had, just sliding you back there, you can have a little sit. Bring on one of the old ones, as you can see, of this rather odd action with the legs that just seem to move all over. The worst one being the warrior, that one's just all over, don't have a clue what's going on here. Bring on the new one. He doesn't have any of that. He's not having absolutely any of it. He's incredibly sturdy. So once again, backs up the point that he's probably the best Sontaran so far to date. So generally, although that I'm joking about the inclusion of this figure in the set, it is probably the best Sontaran so far for the new series anyway. But the main question is, did I want another one? Mm, maybe, not really. Of the accessories that comes with this figure is the little Sontaran Trooper helmet. Once again, it's the same average Sontaran Trooper helmet, to be honest. We've got the little eye sockets there that are clear, and then a little motif thing on the top along sort of the little ridge section there. And once again, this just slides onto your Sontaran head. It kind of pops into place slightly, as you can see there. And once again, it's made of the nice metallic plastic and fits in well with the rest of the body. And the second accessory is also the Sontaran gun. Once again, your average Sontaran gun, really. Not really too much going on. If anything, there's in fact less detail on this than the other ones that we've seen in the past because normally they have a few scuff detailings on. This one is just your average gun with a few little smaller details on but no paint has been applied so generally overall it's nice and to be quite honest it's a rarity that we've actually got more than one accessory for a figure in these B&M sets. Just briefly going on to articulation once again we get the odd ball jointy thing at the waist meaning that he can fall over and things like that and his helmet can come off as well apparently. The arms also move out I do believe that they're on a little bit of a ball joint but due to the now the shoulder pads are a little bit harder this means that they can in fact pop out as much anymore, which to be honest, I don't particularly mind. We have the upper arm articulation at 360, bend at the elbow, once again 360 at the wrist, upper thigh articulation as well as the T-crotch joint, bend at the knee, and we also have a little bit of an odd moving joint there at the foot as well. So generally a lot of articulation. Sontaran once again fits in with all of the other Sontarans available once they are masked, and they're quite obviously not just another copy of general style. But yeah, generally overall, it is a nice looking figure. It generally looks okay on display, but the ending point is the fact of this very setup right here took about five minutes to put up because these figures are incredibly unstable. They fall over all the time. I think that quite a lot of other people have those problems as well. So generally, can we just forget the new series Sontarans exist now? And if you want to release any more Sontarans, make them classic ones that can actually stand up with ease. Thanks, character. No more Sontarans. Although the latest one is probably the best. So well done. Extra points for that, probably. So overall for the Doctor Who, the Monsters Collector Figure Set exclusive to b and it's just another one of those Doctor Who budget sets really, isn't it? It's only $16.99. Let's face it, in the prime time of the Doctor Who classic figure line, you were looking at about $16.99 for only one figure. Of course, if you are new to Doctor Who figure collecting and you don't have any of these figures so far, then I highly recommend this set for what it is. If anything, it's improvements on previous figures that we've seen in the line so far. If you were not lucky enough to get the original collection build Tomb Controller Cyberman, then 
and I highly recommend this release because you finally get your hands on one for a pretty decent price. And to be honest, I recommend this set alone for the Attack Cyberman variant. For me, it's definitely the highlight of the set. It's an 80s Cyberman. I absolutely love that design. And you know, you may like the Sontaran as well. If you don't like the Sontaran, you can stick it in a drawer or put it on eBay. I mean, it probably won't sell, but you know, at least you'll have another Sontaran in the collection. At the end of the day, it's $16.99. You can't exactly go wrong. And these are probably going to be some of the only 5.5 releases for this year. So if you're a classic fan, if you're a new series fan, I do recommend this one for what it is. It's a nice little gift. It's a nice little addition to the collection and some rather nice variants in there as well. So as I said, I will try to review the fourth Doctor set at some point whenever I get my hands on that one. It's not exactly as interesting as this one from what I can see in the box so far. And as I also said, I definitely will not be touching that bleeding ninth Doctor set because it looks bloody awful. So yeah, that's that for this review. And I guess I will see you in the next one whenever that may be. Bye for now.